Welcome back to a new edition of Pod by the Bay, presented by the Bay Area Examiner. I'm Seth Varner, joined by Anthony Vito and Robert Stieg. Uh, we've got some coaching moves to talk about this week. Not too much going on, really, on the field, but we've got some off-the-field stuff here. So uh, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with baseball? That's probably the bigger news of the last few days. So baseball has moved on from head coach Billy Mole. Went to the old dermatologist, got the mole removed. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we oh. like that. Do we like that? I was workshopping that. We, uh, oh, um, man. <laughs> Oh, we were working on that one long. Dude, that like was that. great. Yeah. Um, so we talked about it a little bit last week on our uh, Patreon. I think it was just a Patreon podcast last week. Mm-hmm. This seemed somewhat inevitable unless they just won every game the rest of the season, right? Like, was this pretty expected on your end, Steve? Yeah, I I think uh, I think his fate was decided earlier in the season barring this barring another incredible 2021-esque run um <clears throat> just some missteps along the way both on the field and off the field um some clues were kind of dotted around uh of things and although they had everything to play for uh this past weekend to continue their season um you know some just brainless mistakes on Friday or excuse me on Thursday night cost you uh what should have been a win and then on you know Saturday or excuse me on Friday you were able to get a win uh in convincing fashion and then on Saturday you just you you what harbored you the entire season which was not having a deep enough bullpen came into fruition because your bullpen just gave up 10 runs uh so overall I you know something to be expected do I think the overall kind of question that some people might have was, you know, was he deserving of another gear? And the answer is just undoubtedly, yes, he was. Um, you don't want to fire your head football coach, your head basketball coach, and your head baseball coach all in the same season. <clears throat> that will remain true no matter what. And so, you know, give him that year. Let him make the moves that he felt like he could make to put his team in a better position. Um, you know, changing around the assistant coaches, bringing back some assistant coaches who were successful with USF and, you know, bring in some additional arms to see if you can shore up that bullpen. We knew the bats were going to be fine this year, but you know, the, the bullpen just couldn't help itself and it all came to a head. You scored eight runs uh, by all accounts. You should have won on Saturday, but you didn't. So, yeah. It's, it's hard to, you know, USF doesn't host, but when it's in clear water, you expect to be there every year. So missing out in two years, so that's a six-year tenure as the head coach and then was the pitching coach under Mark Kingston um, previously before that. So his final record ends up being 174, 187, and 1. And, um, yeah, you improved a little bit last year. You still have another losing record and only had two uh, over 500 seasons. And six years is a lot. I mean, I know with the COVID shortened season, you kind of give a little bit there. And you mentioned a lot of people wanted um, thought he should have um, been fired last year, but you don't want to do – uh, all three in the same uh, year. So this this is just unfortunately what uh, ended up happening. And you have all these teams now in your backyard in Clearwater going for the AC tournament, and you're not playing. And that's uh, Mike Kelly said or seemed to think that that wasn't going to be good enough. Yeah, you know, I we, we talked about this a little bit last week, but just in terms of pure perception, right, most fans – uh, you know, in terms of investment and, and thoughts on the program, I feel like you're in Florida, you've got a lot of baseball talent. We talked about it more at length in the Patreon episode last week. But just the access to talent, it seems like you should be able to put a, together a pretty good team. Um, they announced the attendance rec- the attendance for the season, the average attendance, and it was still really good for baseball. So it's not like the program's in a really unhealthy place in terms of support or anything of that nature. Um, it's just that they weren't quite getting those results and there just wasn't, you know, I think really there just wasn't forward momentum, right. For the program. It seemed to be in neutral more than anything. And after a couple of seasons, you know, I think when you have 
um, you know, when you fire some assistants, that can usually give you a year. And then if the same problems are persisting, then it's, you know, the blame's got to go somewhere else, right? So um, there's there's no more assistants to blame. It kind of ends up rolling back on the head coach. So fair or unfair, lucky or unlucky, and sometimes these things can just be luck. But, um, you know, USF will be looking for a new head coach. Uh, one option that everybody's throwing out uh, and people all over Twitter asking questions about, Steve, I think you've got some pretty good knowledge on this one. Just uh, why not just go and get the coach from the University of Tampa? To step up, it's D two to D one. Why might not that be so as simple as just that being D two to D one? Step up in job and prestige, right? Why, why yeah. is it not quite that simple? It, it. I mean, optically, yes, it makes sense. You know, the local D two school that you are bigger than, you should be able to just easily be like, ah, oh, yes, our developmental league. Let's grab that guy and just put him in green and gold. But Joe Urso has been with University of Tampa for many, many, many years, collected his 1,000th win uh, this past uh, Saturday uh, for, for University of Tampa. It is just an absolute lifer there. I mean, if you want to talk about a guy that has absolutely no reason to leave because he is heralded as a hero there, he has done literally no wrong and continues to win, and also gets all the money that he needs because UT's baseball program is basically their only profit sport. And on top of all of that, like he, he has everything that he needs in the University of Tampa. The only kind of thing he would – like why would he add the fact that now he has to worry about NIL and now he has to worry about you know any other – like for, for him, it's so easy. Because he recruits Division One players to play at a Division Two school and beat the shit out of other Division <laughs> Two schools, and these guys rake. <laughs> like these guys from University of Tampa have offers from some other like mid-major schools, but they'll come to University of Tampa because they're it, it makes more sense for them, and he'll recruit locally too because it's Joe Urso and everyone knows Joe Urso. I mean, he's heralded in, in the Tampa region far and wide and everything. And it, it's to him, it like would overcomplicate things. And by God, he's probably like six years away from retiring anyways. I don't know. Baseball managers last a long time. So it's probably like 60 years away from retiring. But I just, to me, should you call Joe Russo? Yeah, why not? Give him a call. See what he thinks. He's probably going to be like, ha, no, and just hang up on you. So um, I, I think you can do... If you are looking for a guy that can lead USF's baseball program, I don't think optically taking the guy who has been with the University of Tampa for 25 years is the answer to that problem. It's it's the quick fan answer because uh, some unfortunately some fans have like six brain cells, but like it, it's not the logical. It, this is to me the Joe or so. You know, USF hired Joe Urso is the same as like, oh, USF hired Jim Levitt or, or um, you know, oh, call Tony Dungy. Like, I, I just I don't see it once you get past like the surface level, like, oh, yeah, they're both in Tampa. That makes sense kind of thing. So if, if you don't think it's him, we'll discuss, you know, baseball is so difficult. Like we were looking at some coaches. And, you know, you try to see, okay, where did this guy come from? You know, what's the what's the way you kind of work up the ranks in baseball? And just, you know, we, we looked at – I was just looking at the Kennesaw State head coach. It's like, okay, where did he coach before? And it's like he was a scout for 12 years. Oh, like <laughs> I'm not I, I'm not up to date on all the scouts and, and all the major league scouts. So um, this – what's interesting is I think both baseball and we'll talk a little women's golf as well – those could kind of come from a variety of places. It's not like a pipeline like football where you're always going to hire the you, you're going to hire a guy that's you know a head coach at a lower level or a assistant at a real, at a power five school. You know, it's kind of all over the place. Um, so, but what do you think is kind of 
for this team, what are they going to be looking for in a manager? Is it head coach experience necessary? Is it recruiting? Is it, you know, fundraising? Like what, what do you think, what do you think is kind of going to be what Michael Kelly is really looking for as he looks for a new baseball coach? It's, it's, it's hard. Cause like college, ba- I've, I've made my point very clear about college baseball. It's hard. Like I, I don't envy these coaches because they, they have the same kind of great expectations that like men's basketball and football does, but with like a 10th of the resources. In fact, it, it's comical when you look at like how scholarship distribution works, you know, for football, you get 85 scholarships. For basketball, you get 13, which is probably what a good, like, that that fills up your roster to like 95%, right? Just purely oh, based yeah. off percentage and number of guys on the team and everything like nobody's, that. Nobody's playing 13 guys. Typically. Right. Do you know how many scholarships baseball gets? It's like 11.7. There's a it's weird 11. number in there. It's 11.7. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, God, I, how did I know that? <laughs> You know, you're smart. And we also talked about it in Discord today. Yeah. Uh, oh. But but so so a lot of these scholarships you're looking at are partial scholarships. And a lot of them, you know, sometimes you have to give them to the guys that are coming from JUCO that are local because they have the credits where they can just quickly accumulate, you know, the the level of, um, you know, like uh, educate or excuse me, the academic side of things and keep that up. And so unless you're like Florida, who, yes, we are willing to give some we're li- willing to give 11 guys a good scholarship and w- these other 28 guys are willing to just be walk-ons essentially you don't really get like a fair shake at recruiting it's all about relationship building at that point so realistically for usf what they're going to need to look for above all else, you don't really familiarity with usf or with the tampa bay area and the i4 corridor would be nice but you don't really need it i i think it's I think it's like a faux pas that you have to like be like your roots have to be here because like Alex Golish came in with basically no roots in this area and coach Amir came into this area with no roots and immediately hit on local talent. So I think it's like a faux pas that you need a guy that's like, I went to Blake, I went to Armwood. Just mm. get a guy who gives a shit about recruiting. I, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Sorry. I'm at my two cuss limit now. So <laughs> <laughs> we're done for the evening on my person but how just long get a guy how, that how many before you have to market explicit you know i think it's three. Oh, oh they're all these are explicit but yeah at some <laughs> point you're gonna start paying towards the uh the curse bucket so mm. yeah Eventually. so um, i guess the thing right should be theoretically in baseball since everyone's at a scholarship limit it should be easier to recruit quality players right i mean obviously there's the draft the whole draft of it all where sometimes you can find a guy that's a hidden gym and then he blows up and now he gets drafted and, and your class kind of gets hurt or a guy gets drafted late and just decides, Hey, I'm just going to go pro. Um, but theoretically with those low scholarship limits, you should be able to field a pretty quality team in the state, not just the state of Florida, but in the Southeast, like there's a lot of good baseball within probably a seven hour drive of Tampa. So, of course, you can play it year round. I mean, here's the one thing about the talent too. Um, uh, uh, Coach Mole, just in his tenure, had 12. I think the number was draft picks since he's been coached for the past six years. I mean, there are some high end talent here. Some of it didn't come to fruition uh, for multiple years, like you would hope. There are some um, recruiting classes where guys ended up deciding to go into the draft, and I know last year. There was, uh, Steve reminded me of the name. There was a guy who was anticipating being a, you know, I got no clue. <laughs> got no idea. I have no um, idea who his name was. I, I remember that there, there was a pitching prospect that ended up going into the draft instead. Um, it just when you're trying to turn over talent, that's the hard part. But like getting 12 guys drafted from, from here in six years, five years, that's not terrible. So it just seemed like the collection of it all or timely hitting. Um, I'll try to remember in, in the Discord, um, we, we have some really great guys who would go in and do play by play, which is nice to then go and take a look at what's going on. There should be timely hitting or, you know, you hitting the double plays when you have men on and they just couldn't get runners in scoring position to hit, even though you had two first team, all the AC players uh, uh, as uh, as hitters. So it, it's almost like the talent was there. Just it all didn't seem to click. Um, and 
so you know that's why you go for the change yep so we will be we will talk in uh the patreon about we'll throw out some names um hasn't been much around this in terms of uh speculation or rumors but we'll throw out some names that could be on the list there uh now on the, so we we got a coaching move that seemingly all USF fans on Twitter wanted and we'll transition to one that I don't think many did want uh you lose your women's golf coach right Erica Brennan is gone to Georgia Steeg this one kind of Nathan has mentioned a few times that she's really good. I can't believe she's still in Tampa. Uh, well, <laughs> she's not. Was it? Is this one of those ones that it was kind of unexpected to see it happen, but uh, it wasn't a shocker because you knew it was going to happen eventually? I So I was shocked just because, like, last week um, – she uh we we uh got a girl transfer here and i'm about to look up her name it's like chantal uh al ahib or something like that um yeah uh chantal al chaib um and then coach erica but retweeted and said you know welcome to tampa bull for life blah 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 things and so at that point i was like oh maybe she is gonna stay that's strange um (laughs) Because, like, <laughs> I kind of expected it to be just, like, a formality once the season was over that she was probably going to have some suitors in, like, the SEC or the Big Ten or something um, that would come calling. And, yeah, I didn't expect us to get any recruiting news from women's golf. Um, if there was a time that she was going to leave, it was probably the right time with Melanie Green and a few others graduating. Um, you know, some of the gals that she recruited and – are now gone and you kind of don't have those ties um, or you don't have as, as heavy of ties, I should say, because there's obviously um, some younger gals on the team too. But yeah, I think, I think just the timing was questionable just because I, again, we hit a recruit last week from uh, from sacred heart who I'm sure is going to be very good for the university of Georgia as well. But I mean, oh. <laughs> I mean, let's be let's be honest. She, she, that this girl's gonna transfer to Georgia, um, but I, I I don't think it's as much of a surprise to anyone who's kind of been paying attention. This is also the natural progression at like all of these non-revenue sports. Like we hired her from Southern Miss, uh, and she was previously at like St. Leo. So this is like the natural progression of like you go from like a D two school to a small school to like an assistant coach somewhere and then you become a head coach again for a relatively small school and then you become the head coach of a big time program like the University of Georgia. So uh yeah, it sucks. I'm super happy for her though. Like I I'm so thrilled for one of the nicest and heartwarming and just enthusiastic people. Um but it sucks still. It's like the biggest double edged sword you could ever ask for. Here's the timeline too. Um, this is from the AJC. Uh, they uh, Georgia fired Josh Brewer on May 9th, and that tweet you're referring to with that commitment was May 13th. <laughs> so, you know, tight timelines there, and then you know the hirings announced on the 21st. Generally, these things move rather quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. Again, when you can go, at, same with the players, same with the coaches. When you can go get that bag, we all know we hate to say it. SEC it just means more, man. And Georgia's a hell of a place to go play golf. I'm, you know. You're a hop, skip, and a jump from Augusta National. Yeah, I mean, you have a, ma- a million great golf courses. I mean, Florida's the same way. But uh, when you can go to get that SEC money, go for it. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, the, the UGA coach was there for 12 years. So, I mean, there could be longevity there. So, uh, yeah, it, it happens. And, uh, you know, you you go ahead and do uh, another national search. I, want, I wonder if Michael Kelly and Associates was, like, figuring out baseball. He gets this on his desk or, if, you know, he, you know. I never know if you have like a little short list, if you have an idea of inkling or something like that, but going to be doing two coaches in two in uh, two days. That's crazy. I think he has like a Rolodex of names. It didn't seem like this was much of a surprise to Michael Kelly based or to anyone that was there. How quickly in, they had the draft. They had really. that article ready, like instantly. Oh, they pulled all the names off the, off the, um, uh, the online, um, staff too. 
Yeah, yeah there's, there's a, there's a everything's gone. Instant. So, question on this one, and this is another one. We'll throw some names. Women's golf, like you know, I was just looking at somebody that their previous job before they became their coach was as a golf instructor. Like, so this is another one where you can kind of pull people from all over the place if you want. Um, but my question is, uh, do you think it will have to be a woman? We're talking about legality. Not legal. Just, do you think they'll want um, to have a woman's coach for the women's golf team? Yeah. Um, yeah, you probably do. Um, there's there's examples of men's coaches in the, all over the country too. But I, you know, I don't know if you have a women's coach. If you'd like to maintain that, um, is that something you think is a consideration, or they're just looking for best fit? I mean, ultimately, it's gonna be best fit. It, it's it's like it's it's BPA at this point. It's like you you get the best possible person you can to lead this program. Um, yeah, I mean, you you don't. I mean, a lot of these sports, it's 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 up to the preferences of of whomever is interviewing as well. So I know Michael Kelly doesn't particularly have any inherent biases or or yeah, anything the, the like women, that. The women's basketball coach is a man. The a man. softball coach yeah. is a man. Yeah. So I didn't know if that would be one where they'd want to make kind of a like for like. Uh, change or if it doesn't matter at all i don't know no because i mean like i mean like basketball and softball are like the two sports where inherently like there's that big difference um between the the male version of it and the female version of it yeah. but like christy morris is, is the head coach for women's tennis and like they they they're doing fine so i yeah i, I don't think that there's a preference either way i think ultimately it's it's get the person that can replicate and still continue the momentum if you can. Yeah, I, I I think that's probably accurate, but we'll see. It's these will be two really interesting searches, just in terms of like we taught when we when the baseball search came down, or not baseball when the football search came down, we threw out some names. We're like Alex Golish was on our list. Um. Yeah, he was on your uh, on your on your broader list. <laughs> but it was throughout but this I you could throw out 50 names and you may not <laughs> be close to anybody. So um but we've got some names that might be interesting and we're going to talk about those right now in the Patreon. So if you are a patron, $10 a month and up you get a free podcast episode or not a free, you get an extra podcast episode every week <laughs> in addition to uh, being a member of the Insider Discord, where Steeg drops knowledge bombs all the time and drop our insider info as much as we are allowed to. And I say allowed because you know, if you give out too much, sometimes you the spigot runs dry. So uh, it's a balance we are, it's a balance beam we are walking across. So if you are a member there, we're going to talk some names in the Patreon. If you're not a member, join. $5 a month gets you in the Discord. $10 a month gets you Discord and the extra pod every week. Uh, $25 a month gets you all that and uh, some other extra stuff. So you can join on Patreon. Fellas, another great episode. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. <laughs>